route redistribution. I mean, just saying it's pretty cool. In this nugget, we're going to focus on what it is, how it works, and why it's important to you. Let's jump in. Let's say that you and I are going to sit down and bake a cake together. So we look at the recipe and there's some ingredients on that recipe that we don't understand. The chances of our cake not coming out correctly are pretty good if we don't understand the ingredients. Now you might be saying, Keith, what has that got to do with route redistribution? Well, quite a bit. See, route redistribution also has some ingredients that are important to understand to make sure we can fully understand the actual concept of route redistribution. So in that light, we're going to take a look at what is routing, how routing protocols work, and then we'll tie it all together with route redistribution. So let's start off with routing. When I was younger, I drove a produce truck. I know, it was a great job. And I had lots of stops where I had to pick up and make deliveries. Wonderful stuff. The biggest challenge back in those days for me was understanding the directions of how to get to those specific locations. And once I had that down, it was a piece of cake. Well, routers have the same exact challenge. A router needs to learn what to do way before a packet shows up. Let's take an example. Let's pick R2 right here. Dear Mr. R2, if he gets a packet destined for this network right here, he needs to know that he should forward that packet to R4, and R4 needs to know that he should forward it to R5. So it's important to learn. So check this out. When somebody talks about routing, they could be referring to the learning process of how to reach a remote network. So that's the first part right here, learning what to do. And of course, the second piece is doing it. What do you mean, Keith, doing it? I mean, forwarding packets. If R2 does get a packet for this 172.16.56 network, it needs to go ahead and based on what it knows how to do, it needs to go ahead and perform and do it. So that's what routing is referring to. Either one of those concepts is an accurate description of the concept of routing. So our next challenge, how do we train the routers? Well, one option is to use static routes. A static route is just a simple one-line instruction that says, like for R2, dear Mr. R2, to get to this network, go ahead and forward to R4. Dear Mr. R2, to get to this network, forward the packet to R1. Those are static routes, but they're painful because if you have hundreds or thousands of routes and they change periodically, that means manual configuration on all the devices. A better option, instead of using static routes, is to teach your routers how to share. And that's what this is all about, routing protocols. Sharing, like we learned in grade school or kindergarten, is about sharing what you have with others. So for example, if R6 shares the fact that he has networks with R5, and R5 shares them with R4, and R4 shares them with R2, and all the routers are sharing all of the routes, then they can dynamically learn. And that's what routing protocols are all about. A couple of examples of routing protocols would be OSPF, which stands for Open Shortest Path First. It's an open standard. And then there's some routing companies that have proprietary routing protocols like EIGRP, which is the Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol made by Cisco. So if you have a mix of devices, you might have to run an open standard, or you might have to do something to share routes from one routing protocol into the other, and that leads us into the final piece, which is route redistribution. So let's say we have two companies as an example, and this company here decides to use as their routing protocol EIGRP, which only runs on that vendor's devices. And it's okay because R1, R2, and R3, they all learn the routes from each other and they can all make forwarding decisions. No problem. The other company is using a different routing protocol. We'll say it's OSPF, and that's also not a problem. They can share all the routes with each other. They all know how to reach every network in the 172 network because they're sharing it. Now, what would this look like? Let me show you that right now. Here is a terminal window to these devices. So if we take a look at R1, for example, and look at his routing table, he knows how to reach all of these 10 networks, 10, 12, 10, 13, et cetera. If we take a look at R5 on the other company, R5 knows how to reach all the 172, 16 networks, and that's fine for them. And then one day, these two companies merge together and they connect their networks with this common network segment right here. But the challenge is, that all of the devices on this side, the left-hand side, don't know how to reach all the networks on the right and vice versa. What's the solution to this problem? Well, we could simply change out all the routers to use the same exact routing protocol or, da-da-da-da, wait for it, 
wait for it, we could use route redistribution. Route redistribution is having some common ground, which is so important. We have one of these routers, R2 or R4, run both routing protocols. So now with R2 running EIGRP and OSPF, EIGRP is feeding all the routes to R2, and so is OSPF. So there's one router that knows the entire picture, like the map of the entire network. And what we're going to train R2 to do is share. What do you mean, Keith, share? We're going to tell R2, take all the routes you learned via EIGRP and advertise them or put them into OSPF. It goes something like this. And all the routes you've learned, Mr. R2, from OSPF, go ahead and advertise into EIGRP. So R2 is like the translator who's sharing all of the routes in both directions between both of these routing protocols. And that, my friends, is what they call mutual redistribution, when sharing is king. So in this micro nugget, we've taken a look at route redistribution by understanding the concepts of routing, routing protocols, and how route redistribution can share routes from one routing protocol into the other. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.